Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and just look at this beautiful puzzle that we're going to be trying today uh, by Florian Wartman, themed of course on the brand new film Dune 2 and oh, I mean this is just quite beautiful um, and well, what's so clever about this is not just that it, it spells out June 2, but the, the, the sort of the graphics that Florian has used are identical to the, to the sort of film, uh, the film graphics. So if you look at the way that June 2 is, June is written on the film posters, it uses this, this sort of stylistic way of, uh, uh, of drawing the letters. So Florian has somehow built this into a Sudoku, which apparently is only of average difficulty. Uh, and is rather wonderful. So this is what we're going to be attempting in today's video. And I'll read you the rules of this one in a moment or two's time. I've not seen the film yet. Florian's seen it. I think Florian saw it at the IMAX and said it benefits from having the loudest speakers possible. Um, I, I do want to see it. I, I read the book, Frank Herbert's book, when I was a teenager and absolutely loved it. Um, and I have seen the first film and I enjoyed that. So it's a film I'm going to see at some point, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, now, I've got, some, I've got some big news for you, especially if you're a recent high school graduate, um, because this episode of Cracking the Cryptic is sponsored by the global trading firm, Jane Street. Uh, a lot of clever people <laughs> over there and they have a unique opportunity that is coming up and, and the closing date for this opportunity is really soon. It's on the 13th of March. So what's it all about? Well, they have an academy of math and programming, which is basically um, accepting applications now for their summer 2024 program, um, which is running from the end of June to the start of August in New York City. And this is basically a no cost educational program, uh, for, as I say, for recent high school graduates um, interested in maths and computer science, I guess, um, for people who've experienced barriers to accessing advanced STEM educational opportunities. Um, the curriculum, I mean, I wish I could do this, I actually, I really do, focuses on maths, computer programming, data analysis, game theory, puzzles, um, and um, attendees get their travel paid, their food, their boarding, all the program fees are all covered by Jane Street, as well as you get a $5,000 uh, scholarship to put to put towards future educational opportunities for you. So it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty amazing thing, this. Um, and basically to apply, you have to, uh, you have to fill in an application, but the closing date is the 13th. So there's only a few days left. So do check it out. Jane Street has put together a logic puzzle um, to get folks excited about the program. Um, so if you solve it, if you can solve the logic problem, put that you've solved it in your application. Uh, where's the, here it is, here it is. Um, this is a, <laughs> I, love, I like this very much. It's a skyscraper puzzle um, themed around um, I, well, I won't say too much more, actually. I don't want to give away how to solve it. Um, but um, maybe I'll explain how to solve it once the closing date has passed at some stage. But do, do have a look at that. I'll put the link to that under the video as well. So very cool stuff indeed. And I wish, I, I know, I know that there are going to be many, many of you watching this video who would be ideal candidates um, for this course. So go and get it. Go and go and give yourself a great start. Um, to your future careers um, and I wish you all luck and let me know if any of you manage to get on the program I'd be so I would be so pleased and jealous um, now what else do I need to tell you about a couple of things on the channel today I did a crossword video which was about today's uh, times crossword which was absolutely monstrously difficult it is the second hardest puzzle in the last year so if you like your cryptic crosswords difficult check that video out I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen and then the only other thing I need to mention is a birthday and it's a joint birthday today because Owen and Dylan are twins who've turned 15 and I know this because your friend Colin wrote to us Owen and Dylan, uh, and I think he's very grateful that you got him into Cracking the Cryptic, as indeed are we. So thank you for doing that. And Owen and Dylan, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday today with, of course, an enormous slice of chocolate cake, which is mainly consisting of icing. 
And with all that said and done, let us see if we can do Florian Walkman's puzzle, June 2. And we'll, I'll read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine, once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Box borders divide each blue line into segments with the same sum. So this is this beautiful new wording of this, what we used to call region sum lines. And what does it mean? Um, well, what it means is that these, these cells, you can see this blue line, the D, the D line, the D line has those cells in box one. And then this box border divides this line into sort of segments, if you like. And each of these segments has to have the same sum. So these three digits add up to the same as, well, actually we can see, well, we're going to see when I read you more instructions, we can see what these digits add up to. And then these have to also add up to 10. <laughs> That's a bit of an insight there, but let's keep reading the rules. So neighboring digits on the green line have a difference of at least five. So sometimes this is called a German whispers constraint. So if this square here was a one, this square would have to be at least equal to six in order to be five different at least from one. So that's how green lines work. Um, digits joined by an X sum to 10. So those two sum to 10, which is how I knew those sum to 10 and those sum to 10. Um, digits joined by a V sum to five. We've got a load of those sprinkled around the grid. So these two have to sum to five, etc. Not all X's and V's are given. Right, so what that means is imagine these two squares were one, one and four, I was going to write one and four. These do add up to five and there's no V between them. That's absolutely fine. There doesn't have to be a V between them. We're only being given positive information, if you like, about these particular dominoes and being told that these particular dominoes definitely do contain digits that sum to the relevant total. And then digits joined by a white dot are consecutive. I couldn't see any for a moment, but there are some in there. Um, so basically that means if this is a one, well, let's make it a two in the corner, then this has to be a one or a three in order to be consecutive with two. And not all dots are given, so it's perfectly fine to have consecutive digits elsewhere in the puzzle. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Let's see if we can dodge the worms. Um, Right, where should we start? There's a, a sort of virtual one, two, three, four quadruple in row five. And we can see that obviously there are two ways of making a domino sum to five using Sudoku digits. You could have one and four or two and three. So these must be, okay, so that's giving us this digit. That's probably where we're meant to start. Because this is a one, two, three, four quadruple in row five, we can think about German whispers rules and this cell in the center of the grid. Now the way to understand the restrictions on green lines is first to realize you can never put a five on a green line because if you do the digits that are connected to the five cannot exist. They cannot be Sudoku digits because if we go up we need a digit that's at least five different from five. Well that's ten or higher and if we go down we get zero or lower. That won't work. So in fact, every digit along a green line can be thought of as having one of one of two uh, monikers, if you like, a moniker with a K um, the, um, <laughs> and an ER at the end. Um, no, because, because basically the digits on the green line, therefore, are either above five or below five. Now, imagine this square. Well, actually, let's start at the beginning. Let's imagine this square was low, lower than five. Could this cell also be lower than five? Well, no, because there's no way that one and four even could be made five digits apart. They're simply not far enough apart. So this would have to be higher than five. Then this would have to be lower than five. Then this would have to be higher than five, etc. So the line oscillates, but this digit cannot be low and it cannot be five. So that must be high. And that allows us to oscillate this line. Um, like so and that's going to do wonders actually in the, along the rest of this too because those digits are now low by oscillation and now I'm actually wondering if we're meant to shade this puzzle um, hmm. I'm not sure I'm sort of tempted to 
So what I, what do I mean by shade it? Well, I'm wondering if we have to shade it between low digits and high digits. Let's just do it. <laughs> YOLO it. Um, so the oh no, hang on. Which way am I? I meant to make cold digits blue, I think. So I'll, I'll do blue for cold digits, and I'll do orange for high digits. And what, what of course you can see in the middle box is there's a one, two, three, four quadruple. So all of these are definitely high hot digits as well. And in this row, these have got to be hot digits because they can't be ones, twos, threes, and fours. Now we might be able to do a bit more actually by thinking about certain digits are more restricted than others on German whispers lines. Yeah, in fact, let's think about all three of those as a as a unit and wonder whether any of them could be six and the answer is no and the reason is that six is a naughty digit on german whispers lines it only ever partners up with the digit one so if we make any of these digits six you can see we're we're going to break sudoku rules either in box five by repeat if this is a six that's double one if this is a six these are double one if this is a six these are double one so none of these can be six that gives us a seven eight nine triple this square is hot but not seven or nine so that's five or six and hmm. well we can do the same sort of thing using this can't be four four is also naughty it only partners up with nine so we if we put four here we'd get double nine if we put four here we get double nine hmm Right, I'm not seeing these are these are low digits definitely. Those are low digits. The symmetry is remarkable actually. Oh yeah, okay. So the I'm well. I suppose the yes, the symmetry is remarkable. Yeah, it really, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The only thing that breaks the symmetry is that the two isn't perfectly symmetrical. And the white dot, there's no white dot down here to be opposite opposite this. I'm thinking about symmetry in terms of a 180 degree rotation of the grid. But it's very evident that a lot of things overlap if you spin the grid around 180 degrees around this, this point. Um... Right, okay, so what do we do now? Well, I can see we can do a bit more shading in column six. If we think about the nature of an X domino, it's got to have a low digit on it. It's got to have a one, two, three, or four, and it's got to have a high digit on it, a six, seven, eight, or nine, because four will partner six, three will partner seven, two will partner eight, and one will partner nine. So these two X dominoes together must contain two low digits. And there are already two low digits in the column, so these digits are high. And that is quite interesting, is it, for this region sum line? This is at least a five. Yeah, that is interesting. So this cell's restricted because the absolute minimum sum now of a 10 domino and a five, which is the minimum, this is a hot digit, so it's five, six, seven, eight, or nine. The minimum sum of these is 15, and that that domino there has to sum to the same as those three cells. So this domino sums to at least 15 and therefore it doesn't include a five, but it is hot because you can't put five and 10 into these squares. So these are both hot digits. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but I, I, I should take my own advice and observe that the grid is highly symmetrical. So I can do exactly the same. Anything I do on this column, I ought to be able to do on the, in this column as well, providing it doesn't make use of the whisper. And we've got two X's in this column, so they're going to contain two blue digits. So these two digits have to be hot digits. That digit is the same thing. 
So these digits have to be hot and they have to be 6, 7, 8 and nine, or 9 because this digit is high. And in fact, right, now ah, these two also can't be very high, can they? Because the maximum these could be would be an 8, 9 pair adding up to 17. Same is true here. So this cannot be bigger than, than 7 and neither can this. Um, right, what now? The, 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 the D and the C, they, we both, we know that both of these add up to 10. And that must mean something. It must mean something about how many hot digits can be in the sequences. Yes. Okay. So let's let's just think about that. So these two digits and these two digits sum to ten. Now, how many hot digits therefore can we put in these squares? And the answer in each case is a maximum of, of one. Because obviously if we put a 5 and a 6 in, put 2 in, they would add up to 11 already and the other digit couldn't be minus 1. And we can't put 3 low digits, or at least we can't put 3 low digits here. Because there are only, we've already used 2 low digits. So this has 1 high digit on it and 2 low digits. And that means that square is high. And by symmetry, that must be the same here. This must, this can't have three low digits on it. So it's got two low digits, which added to these is all of the low digits for the row. So there's one high digit on here, and that must also be high. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, what does that mean? I don't know. So hang on a minute. So there are two low digits on here. Right. Okay, Sudoku. <laughs> of course, of course it's going to be Sudoku. Ah, right. Okay, so I've just established, I was focusing so much on the hot digits, I didn't think about the, the cold digits. There are two cold digits on here. Um, don't know where they go. But I do know where those two cold digits on the bottom of the D go in this box, don't I? Because they can't be those two. So they must be these two. And then by Sudoku, where do we put these two cold digits in row row 5, they're going to go on the V. So that means the hot digit that is in here is a 5. And presumably that works the same here. The two cold digits are the same as these two cold digits, which are the same as those two cold digits. So there is a 5 on here. This is a 6 by Sudoku. There is a 5 in one of these two cells by Sudoku. And we might have to think about colouring colouring our V's a bit bit more diligently. Because this domino we are saying is the same as this domino, isn't it? Yeah, because these digits go in those two squares and go in those two squares. So we, yeah, let's let's actually record that somehow. So we'll give these a, a, a flash of some sort. We'll make what, what color flash is going to work. Green. Yeah, I'll use green. I'll take purple out of there and then I'll make these purple. Um, but these and these need to have a flash because there's a five in these as well. And we got a six here, didn't we? feels like it might do something okay yeah uh, and another point then 
is because 4 in this, this box is in one of two places, the 4 partners up with a 1 within its fee, 4 plus 1 equals 5. So if that was a 4, this is a 1. If that was a 4, this is a 1. So you can't have 1s in those two squares. Um, right, and that's going to mean something probably. Um, <laughs> let me just think about this. I don't know what it means. I'm sure it means something. So one of these is a four. Oh, so the central digit is not 9. Yeah, that's true. Because, because there's a 4 in one of those positions, whichever one it is, it's going to put a 9 here or a 9 here. And that 9 will see the central cell. So the central cell is 7 or 8. Now, 7 is a restricted digit. From, oh, that's it. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. So what I was about to say is that seven is a restricted digit on a German whispers line because like its friend, the six, six can only partner one. Seven can only partner one and two. But that begs the question, how could either of those squares be seven? They can't be because we've now established that these two squares add up to five and these two squares add up to five. So there is no way for those to be seven which means 7 goes in the middle of the grid, and these two squares are now a 1-2 pair, which means these two squares are a 3-4 pair. Um, now, what does that mean? I don't know yet. Some Oh, we, oh actually, it's, it's doing, this 6 is doing something here that I hadn't noticed. So these are now at least 7 and 8. Oh, well, that's the same, isn't it? Ah, this digit is 7, 8 or 9. Because it's high and it's not 6 and it's not 5. So there's a 7, 8, 9 triple. This, this is a 6 by Sudoku. We can't put 6 on a line that's already got 5 on it if it's adding up to 10. So that's a 6. And... That might be important. Maybe. Can't see, I can't see why. That digit is 8 or 9, isn't it? Because 5 is in one of these squares. 7 and 6 have gone. So that's 8 or 9. So this can't add up to 17 now. So that can't be a 7. Is that useful? So that digit's the same as this digit. And hmm, we have to think harder again. Right. I'm, t <laughs> I'm stuck, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, apologies. Oh, well, I was, I was going to do that if I could actually type it in. Right, what does this mean then? Can we? Um, no, I am stuck. I'm properly stuck. I don't know what to do. Um, could we argue about how are we going to disambiguate these two digits? Do not add up to five, do they? Therefore, does that mean something? It might do. Whichever one of these, whichever one of these is four, has a one opposite to, to it. Uh, no, I think I'm. I think I'm starting to go round the same. You know, I'm starting to do the same things in my brain as I go through these options, which is not the way to approach this puzzle, is it? What about seven and six are over here? Yeah, but these can't add up 
to 6 plus 7, can they? Because 13 isn't enough. We know we're looking for 15 or 16. So this square is 6 or 7. Which might be interesting. These are 15. Yeah, if they're 15... Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. So if this is 16, this is 7, 9, that's 8, 6, that's 8. No, I'm sorry, I can't quite, I can't quite work it out. I'm not quite seeing how to do it. Yeah, everything's so symmetrical, I can't figure it out. Right, okay, so we're going to have to think again. What should we look at instead? Could we... Can we rule out anything? Can I rule out anything from this square or anything from this square? This, These two cells feel like they're the pinch. Well, I suppose, oh, they could be the same. If they were both six, then that would work from a Sudoku perspective. If that's five, that's five, and five goes down there. And I've got to put two more. Well, I've got to put two X's in each of columns four and six. Um, so if that was 4, it gets quite interesting. Because that would not make this 9. This would be a maximum then of 8 plus 7, which is what it would have to be. It would have to go 9, 8, 7. This would be 5. This would be 5. No, can't see it. Right, I'm going to have to look something else. Where else shall we look? Well, hang on. Is it right? Let's look at where the high digits are in this box. There must be one on that X. There must be one on that X, mustn't there? So that's all five of them. So those two are low digits. They are one, two, three, and four. Now, we can't quite repeat that trick down here because the symmetry, because it works slightly differently. We don't have this poking in and causing mischief. Now, can we do anything clever with that though? I know that these are definitely low. Five, oh, oh, that's it. Oh, that's weird. That's it, okay. Because the, the point here, and it's very simple once you see it, is where is 5 in column 5? And it's got to be at the bottom. So that's a 6. And that's going to do, hopefully, magic. But well, let's see. These squares now have to add up to 16. So they have to be 7 and 9. Which means that is 8. Which means this can't possibly be 4. Because 8 and 4 are only 4 apart. That's not 5, which is not enough. So that's 4. That's 9. We know these add up to 5, so that's 2, that's 1. So now we can fill these strings in. That's 2, 3, 5. This is 1, 4, 5. This is 2, 3. This is 1, 4. Um, this is a 6 by Sudoku. That's an 8 by Sudoku. In the middle box, we haven't put 5 and 9 in. So let's pencil mark that up and see what that tells us. Right, so there are, there's now restrictions, look. Oh, well, there's a massive restriction on this X because this X has to add up to 10 and it's not four, six, three, seven, or one, nine. So that is two, eight. Oh, I thought that, I actually thought that was going to do quite a lot. It's done, it's not done anything really. Um, well, it does place eight in this column because I can't put eight on this X because it will clash with the, we'll have to put two on it as well and it will clash. So eight goes at the top of the grid there. And that means these dominoes are not one nine and they're not two eight. 
So in some order, oh, 3, 7 must be this side then. So that's 3, 7. This is 4, 6. These don't add up to 5 then, but they don't include 3 and 4. This is a 1, 2 pair. And in this column, this, this domino at the bottom must be a 1, 9 pair because it's the only digits left that add up to 10. So that's a 5. That's a 9. This is not a 6. Look at this column. Where does the 5 go in it? It can only go there. So these add up to 15 and they can't involve 9 therefore. So that's the 9. And in this column, what have we not done? We've not put in 7. So let's put 7 in. These squares are now known. They've got to be 1, no, 3, 4 and 5 I think. So 3, 4, 5 triple. Do we know the nature of this? Do we know its colour within the sort of purples and greens? Not sure. Um, okay, but I'm feeling better now. I think I think at least we've we've cracked it open a little bit, haven't we? Now we can also. I'm going to claim. Oh, we could have always got this. Ah, bobbins. Here's something I haven't spotted. Oh no, well, it doesn't work down there. There's no white dot. Okay, it works there. I've always been able to know the parity of that digit because these add up to ten. And a consecutive pair of digits will include an odd and an even digit. That's the nature of them. So they will add to an odd number. So in order to make sure these add up to an even number, i.e. 10, that has to be odd. And that's the world's most useless deduction because apparently it can be, well, it can't be 9 because we can't make these 1 and 0. If, it actually can't be 7 because if that was 7, this would have to be a 1, 2 pair and that will break that square. So maybe this is under more pressure than I think it is. If that's five, these have to be a two, three pair. Hmm. Might be possible if that's three. No, three doesn't work. Because if that's three, these have to add up to seven. So they must be a three, four pair. And we've just said if that's if this is three, so we'd have two threes in the box. And if this is one, these would be a four, five pair. So, hang on. Well, there's always 5 in this sequence, therefore. And if this is 5, we said this is a 2-3 pair. And if this is 1, it's a 4-5 oh, pair. So, if this was low, if this was a 4, that would be all the low digits. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in that sequence. So, these would all be high. And they would be from six they would be a six seven nine triple and what's going on on this sequence oh we know the parity of this in exactly the same way that's even because these are odd those are odd so we've got to uh, maintain the parity that's got to be two four six or eight now we might be able to restrict this one as well let's think about that so if that's two these have to be six and seven <laughs> if that's four these have to be five and six if this is six these have to be uh, four and five and if it's eight these have to be three and four ah okay well that's that I can rule out if that's three four this V can't exist so that's not eight Oh, so maybe that's a point. If it's 4, 11, 5, 6. No, that doesn't use up the other option. Um, oh dear, okay, sorry, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to get rid of those corner pencil marked 5s while I see them. Maverick's about to fly over, so we've got... Um, we've got a proper edition of Cracking the Cryptic when Maverick flies over. Okay, so what's it going to be? Is it going to be something to do with Sudoku? Can I get the parity of that digit? Yes. Um, again, this is even. That's odd. So that's got to be odd. So that's 1, 3, 5, 7 or 9. Can we reduce this at all? 
uh, we're heading to 16 this time. So if this is 9, these are a 3, 4 pair. If it's 7, these are a 4, 5 pair. Am I just missing tricks here? Is it, or is this actually just completely... Oh, it's not 5, <laughs> because 5 would make this have to be a 5, 6 pair to add up to 11. So at least I get rid of something. If it's 3... I need, no, if it's three, I need six, seven here. So that doesn't work either. And if it's one, I need, uh, what do I need? 15, I need seven, oh, seven, eight. Okay, so if it's one, I need a seven here and an eight here. If it's seven, I need four, five. don't see any restriction on that at all and if it's nine I need three four right right so the point there which is interesting is that those digits yeah I don't think this can be a one four pair If it's a 1-4 pair, the only option for, for, the, for, the, for these that remains that's consecutive is 7 and 8. But that required that to be a 1. And if that's a 1-4 pair, that doesn't work. So this is not a 1-4 pair. This is a 2-3 pair. That's, oh, hang on. That's a 2. That's an 8. So that 2-3 is taking 3 out. Ah, ah it's, it is taking 3 out of here. But it doesn't take 4 out because 4 can still partner up with 5. Bobbins. Uh, but, mm. Yeah, but it takes 9 out of here, doesn't it? Because 9 needed a 3-4 pair, so it's not 9. It's either 7 with a 4-5 pair or 1 with a 7-8 pair. That's not 3, look. 2 is down there. What does this line add up to? this line and there's no dot on this line either so it is more it's more open to interpretation um this line adds up to 10 so there are the other two digits that are not two on this are three and five because they can't be one seven and they can't repeat the two and be two six because the line would be two two six and that's not going to work so actually this is two three five and that means that square is a 4, that's a 5, that's a 3, Sudoku helping us out. That is an 8 in the corner, and that's what we needed. So it's 8, 7, 1 is how this goes. Okay. That gives me a 1, 4 pair <laughs> Sudoku doing more mighty lifting. Um, and therefore, we've got 4, 7, and 9 here. 1, six and eight here that one six eight does that one so that's nine that's one these two squares have got to be four and five by the looks of things so these two, two squares should be a six nine pair that looks like it's working from sudoku doesn't it there's, there's no there's no repeated digits from a sudoku perspective now how does that impact on the top of the grid that square in the corner is not four. <laughs> where is nine in column one? It's got to go there. So where is nine in box three? It's got to be in one of those two squares. I haven't actually thought about eight in box three. Should we have a think about that? What's this line? If we put eight here, what does that mean? We need uh, no. That does not work at all. At all, at all. Uh, no, I mean, it simply can't go there, can it? Because this would have to be a 7-8 pair, and then that would have to be a 0. So 8 is in one of those two cells. That's good. That's going to get me a digit. Because now we can ask where 8 goes in column 9. It's got to go here. And that's, oh, actually, that's doing more. That's a 6, that's a 1. So this isn't a 1. S ah, aha, 6 is on this line. So surely we can work this line out now. The other two digits are adding up. 
Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> That's weird. Because you could put 6, 7 on the dot and cut partner it up with a 2. Or you could put 6 in here and this would be a 4, 5 pair. I did that. No, that's, so we're either using two or four, and that doesn't determine the nature of this, this V domino. I thought it might do, but I don't think it does. Ah. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Right, no. The, the place we look is here. Because what's that digit? And on, by column one logic, it's two, three, or five. But by row logic, it's two or three. And if it's two, whoopsie, whoopsie. So if it's two or three, this is now determined. That's got to be one, four, uh, no, which takes four out of that one. So, oh, and it means this can't be six, because if this was six, didn't we have to put four, five on the dot? I think we did. So that's wrong. So this is two. That's two. That's three. That's two. No three in the corner. That's a five. Um, and now this dot needs to be six, seven. Might not know the order, but it is six, seven. So that becomes four. That becomes one. These squares become a seven, nine pair. Let's tidy up the pencil marking and see if we can do better. No. Oh, yeah, I can actually. That's a one. That's a four. That's a four. That's a five. How does the sevens and eights get resolved? I can't see that. Um, uh, this square is a three by Sudoku. Now that's probably doing something to this. Um, didn't, yeah, if that was five, this had to be a two, three pair. So this is now one with a four, five pair. Ah, no, that's disastrous. So that's got to be in that order. So that's a two. Now that's a four. I think I think we might have cracked this. You know, it feels like it's it's trying to give up its secrets in a in a way that's most generous. Now these are two and oh no, the famous last words. That's a two seven pair. Uh, this is a six seven pair, and it is resolved. We've not put nine or three into these squares, and we can. And that nine is going to go down there, trotting off down the grid. That's going to do lots of things for us. And that's a five. OK, and then we've just got to figure out, oh, look, four. So that's four. That's five. That's five. That's three. That's three. That's two. That's two. That's seven. That's seven. That's nine. That's nine. That's six. What a brilliant puzzle. Yes. What a brilliant. 345 people have solved that already. Wow. Well, that is a testament to, I think, people's love of June, too, and also people's love of Florian Wartman's puzzles. They are always popular because they are brilliant. And that was brilliant. Absolutely gorgeous. I abandoned my colouring a bit, didn't I, halfway through? I'm sorry about that. For those of you who prefer me to colour consistently everywhere, let's maybe I get rid of the purples at least and maybe to get rid of the greens as well. Um, to try and make it look a little bit tidier. Then I suppose mm, what I really should do. Can I do this? I can. Sven software is very clever, isn't it? And then I can just double click everything else and make all those orange. Oh no, it's still not worked. That's meant to be, these have got to be like that. That's got to be like that. That's got to be like that. And we are good to go. Fantastic. Loved it. Really clever puzzle. Not terribly difficult if you could if you knew some tricks and did a little bit of arithmetic. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>